So I don't do blankets. That's just end of story. My name is Stephanie. Welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. Today I thought I would share with you a little bit different of an episode. So in this one I won't be sharing you like my works in progress, finished projects, things like that. Um, I thought I would share a little bit of what inspires me in um, making what some people call scrappy projects or what to do with mini skeins which are generally like 10 grams or 20 gram um, amounts of yarn. And uh, yeah, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. I thought I would pull out some of the projects that I've made that would kind of fall into those categories. And then I have um, some 10 gram mini skeins from an advent calendar that I purchased in 2020 um, to share with you how I'm kind of planning for projects using those yarns. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to uh, mention is that, so I named this episode Mini Skeins and Scrappy Not Scrappy Projects. And the reason I said that is because I kind of have a problem with the, the, like the word scrappy, I guess, or I don't know really a problem, but an issue with it. So my issue is that what is considered scrappy? So it seems like scrappy is anything less than like a brand new skein of yarn, which um, a full size is usually 100 grams. Well, I see, like when I'm purchasing yarns, I see it as adding colors and tools to my toolbox, like colors to my paint palette. When I am purchasing different yarns of different colors, different fibers, things like that, basically I am adding to a palette of like artist tools. And so it doesn't like really matter the amount unless of course you're buying for like a specific project. So if you're gonna buy like a navy yarn for a sweater, then you wanna have enough yardage for a sweater. A sweater's quantity is what a lot of people refer to that as. But if I am purchasing like 100 grams, like one skein of yarn, I may or may not use up that entire thing, but in my mind, I don't view the remaining yarn from a project as like scrappy. Like yes, it's left over from that project, but they're not like leftovers, if that makes sense. Like leftovers you would have from a meal put in the refrigerator because they're just colors added to my tools, my palette that I can use for various projects. So like if I buy a tube of red paint, whatever remaining from one painting isn't like leftover or scrappy paint. It's red to be used in another painting, right? So 
that's how I see it and so that's why it's called scrappy not scrappy there's my long-winded explanation for that um, I'll still refer to them as scrappy projects because that's what people refer to them as and I'm not sure I'm not sure what else to call them unless you just don't call them anything referring to scrappy or not it's just a project um, and I guess that's fine too so with that being said um, there are a lot of indie dyers who do like mini skein calendars, mini skein advents, mini skein kits, and things like that. So there's just smaller amounts of more colors um, that you purchase to make. Sometimes they're in kits for like specific projects. Um, and the fun thing with that is there are some projects that you don't need 100 grams for um, of one color and then instead of purchasing like six a uh, 100 skein grams of yarn which can get extremely expensive you purchase just what you need or closer to what you need which may come in 20 grams or 50 grams of each color and then you might still have a little bit left over for other projects but if you are purchasing that kit for a specific project then you should have closer to the yards that you need for that project so um, I guess I'll segue that into some of the projects that I have made using, I guess, random amounts of yarn. So the first one I will share with you, I'll put on blockers, and um, I've pulled out all socks. Um, but I guess I can also talk to you about the project that I'm wearing. I did talk about the finished project in another episode, um, so I will link to that in the description box below and um, I'll put like a link up in the corner here I don't know which corner it'll show up in but um, it'll be there so here are a pair of socks and some may call these scrappy socks so I made them so that they wouldn't necessarily match but they would use all the same yarns between the two now the amounts of yarn for each color varied and I just started and stopped whenever I felt like changing colors. I did do both of them with this orange heel to kind of tie it together and a hot pink cuff and hot pink toes but then the rest I just kind of went to town and did whatever I wanted to and that can be a really fun way to knit up socks. You can knit them the same which I'll show you on another pair. that out. Now this pair, I have some ends that haven't been woven in, it's like the starting end from the cast on there. Now these ones came in a mini skein set and the set were all 20 gram minis and I believe there were nine colors. So then I picked a solid color to use for the cuff and like mini stripes between each color. And then this pair, I did the same for both. Um, that way they are identical. So that's super fun. And then once you know your gauge and how much yarn you can use per, let's say a stripe, then it gets really fun for planning your projects. So I know that for my socks, I end up using about two grams for 10 rounds. And I usually cast on a 56 stitch or a 60 stitch count for my socks. Um, so it may vary if you cast on 64, 72, 80. Um, but if you have a kitchen scale or a, like a, um, a scale to just weigh your yarn before and after, that is a great way to kind of keep track of how much yarn you're using. So I did a two by two rib in cream. And then I did, I believe it's 10, 10 rounds of one color. And the way I like to knit them is on nine inch um, US one or 2.25 millimeter um, circulars. And then, so I'll just do one. And then once I cut this color, then I'll do the color on the next one. So they're always catching up with each other. And then you don't get second sock syndrome, which is when you knit one sock and you just kind of neglect the second one. Um, because you're always like, you're knitting them in tandem basically. Um, but also, it's it's so that my mindset, like if I'm doing just cuffs, then my mind's thinking cuffs. If I'm doing just legs, my mind's thinking legs. And then my tension is more even between the two socks because I'm knitting those same sections at the same time. 
anyway, going off on a tangent there. But um, yeah, I love how these turned out. They're really fun. And the other fun thing about knitting socks like this is um, if you purchase self-striping yarn, it'll do it for you. So that's great, right? No ends to weave in. Um, and it can be really fun because you just keep going round and round and round and no color matching because the colors are matched up for you. But if you wanted to make your own, basically, this is how you would do it. Um, and then I'll link below or also up here on the screen um, to my favorite tutorials on how to weave in ends as you go because that was a game changer for me. Um, because I could weave them in as I went, I didn't have to worry about having a bunch of ends to weave in afterwards. Now, do I always cut off the tails when I'm done? Like, what the tails would be the left, like, the remaining yarn after you weave them in? No, but if they don't bother me while I'm wearing them, I just don't worry about it. So they're woven in, I block it, which means I wash the sock and then um, lay it out flat to dry or on a sock blocker so that the stitches can stretch out nice and even. And then once it's dry, you can like snip off the ends. And I'll show you here. <laughs> Nothing is snipped off. <laughs> They're all woven in, but I just, I just leave them because it doesn't bother me. Now, if they tickled my feet or something like that, or my toes were getting caught in them, then sure, I will cut them off. But they don't bother me, so I just leave it. And then they also don't end up sticking back out. Like if you cut it too short, you know, things will shift and eventually you might get an end sticking out. I think I have one of those somewhere on the sock I noticed earlier like here. <laughs> There's a little end sticking out and you can just snip that off because it's already woven in but then when they're kind of long on the inside they can't stick back out. So anyway. So yes you can make your own self striping basically except they're not self striping. You're, you, you make your own striping socks. Um, so these were both fingering weight uh, socks now I'm going to show you two pairs of socks that are um, DK weight, but they're fingering held double, so marled socks. And if you've been following me here for a little while and watched some of the other episodes, you'll know that I really enjoy marling. I find it so much fun and it's a way to create kind of like new colors or new colorways because you are essentially mixing your yarn colors together, which is super fun. Now. These socks I have shown before, also in a previous episode. Um, so these socks, I held this variegated yarn double, this variegated speckled yarn double for the main color. And then in the uh, cuff, it was a different color held with one strand of the main color. And then you switch to do it like a contrast color for the striping on the leg. Um, and then the heel and the toes also have one strand of the main color and then your contrast color. So this um, this pair of socks is the High Desert Socks and the pattern is by Lindsay of Lark's Knits and I will link to that in the description box below. Um, and it is such a fun way to play with color. I think that if you have variegated yarns, tonal yarns, solid yarns, speckled yarns, like you can do it with all of them and just just mix and match. It's really fun. Um, and then I think you'll get, kind of get an idea for what kind of look you are going for because if you go with like speckle on speckle that may not give you the contrast that you want versus putting in like a tonal or a solid marled with a speckled or variegated like that will change the look a lot. So a lot of fun with that. Um, and then I believe, I can't remember how much yardage I used for those contrast colors, but not a ton. Like, especially with this green, seafoam green in here. Um, I don't have my yardages on me right now, but you don't, you, you use minimal. Like the, the, the green parts, I'm, I'm most confident that I use less than 10 grams um, total for that. So that is a great way to use up little bits of yarn. And then I can't remember for the peachy color how much I used, but I would guess under 20 grams. And if I'm wrong, I'll note something on the screen. And then, oh, just for reference, my foot circumference is eight inches, foot length is nine and a quarter, and I wear a US seven women's shoe size. Okay, and the last pair of socks I wanted to share with you um, are the Artist Garden Socks by Tiff. And these ones, I 
uh, so I picked out like a bunch of warm colors that I wanted to use and then I didn't do them exactly the same but they are marled. So in the pattern it gives you suggestions of when to pick up and drop the next yarn. I think I just did whatever I wanted to um, but then I followed like the patterning texture part of this um, sock and so yeah so that's another way to play with your yarn is to group them by um, color palette or like warm versus cool or you could do like mono, um, monochromatic kind of way so like if you wanted to put all your purples together or all your blues together that's another way to kind of organize um, your yarn and it can be really um, inspiring to do that because then you might get new ideas of what how you want things to look or what you want to make so yeah so and the other thing is I feel like socks are such a great small canvas to play around with things like that like you're not committed for like a full sweater um, it also would use up a ton more yardage for a sweater than it would be for a pair of socks and then also for a pair of socks if you're marling something and you decide you really don't like how the colors are coming out like it maybe it's too muddy maybe it's too bright whatever it is you can rip it out pretty easily and then just reuse that yarn for something else or try a different color combination um, versus like starting a sweater and then getting through like thousands of yards and then thinking this is not it so yeah um so that is that and I want to say oh with fingering weight yarn too like not not these DK weight socks that use double the fingering weight but um, in general for my socks I feel like I make mine anywhere from like 50 to 75 grams of fingering weight yarn and then um, for fingerless mitts I can make those in about 40 so like 40 to 50 maybe um, depending on how long you want to make your cuff and your fingers but um, around 40 grams of fingering weight yarn and fingerless mitts can be a great way to use up little bits of yarn too um, I found that if it got up to even like five grams in the color block would be pretty big um, I don't have them right here but let me go grab them out real quick all right so these are the everything November mitts and they are meant to be ones that you can knit up using a lot of different little bits of yarn. And how I did it is I did not mean to make the matching clearly, um, but I piled together a bunch of little bits of yarn and I feel like some of them maybe just used up like two grams, maybe even one gram. Um, and I really like them they are so fun and if you want to make them more like fraternal ones just make sure you have enough scrap to go between the two but then you don't necessarily have to do them in the same order or worry about having the yarn split up exactly in half um, but yeah super fun really comfortable I love these um, they have been really nice in like transitional weather but also even just if you're like going out just for a minute or um, some people need to go walk their dog or I don't know I feel like we're also more on our phones now than we ever were and so you might need your thumbs um, and your fingers and so that and cameras I mean it's nice to be able to hold a camera without <laughs> worrying about dropping it but um, so yes these are another great project having little bits of yarn can also be great for fading so marling is a great way to do it uh, fading can be really fun too if you pick colors that have like the way I think of fading is pick a color that has a little bit to do with the previous one so let's say your previous one had some green speckling in it but it was mostly pink well maybe your next one will have a little more green and maybe some pink speckling and then maybe there's some yellow speckling in there too so your next color might have some more yellow in it and so you're like gradually changing the colors over and that can be a really fun project to do with little bits um, of yarn as well. Another great way to use up little bits is color work especially in socks, mittens, hats because they'll use up less yardage than say a sweater but there are lots of sweaters with beautiful yokes that include color work as well and the yoke doesn't may, may not take up a ton of yardage um, for that contrast color. Um, as far as pattern, like specific patterns go, I feel like there's a lot that 
you can make your own by using random bits of yarn. It just kind of depends on the look that you are going for. So for example, I find, I find that a lot of the Stephen West shawl patterns you can do whatever you want with and he encourages you to do whatever you want with it and play with color. Um, the one that I'm wearing right now is the dotted rays shawl and it is a garter shawl with these eyelets and these um, wedges. And this one I started out with um, little bits of yarn and like this lavendery blue gray. I don't remember how much I had on it, but I just knit until it ran out. And then this second color was also, I think it started as a 50 gram skein. And then I knit until I got to a wedge that I wanted to stop at. And then this golden color was a 20 gram mini. And I didn't use up the whole thing either because I wanted it just to be one wedge. And then these bigger wedges at the end started each out as 100 grams, full, so full skeins. And the peachy one, I went till, I think there were 50 grams remaining because I wanted the 50 grams for a pair of socks. And then this bottom coral color, um, I believe I used up almost the whole thing. I want to say there was only like maybe 20 grams left, but I was going to pair the, these two together for socks. But... You could easily use up a lot of different fingering weight yarns and just knit each one until it ran out. And so that's where like your monochrome palette could come in handy. And then I would start with the ones that you have the least amount of grams with in the beginning and then save the bigger ones for the end because your wedges get bigger and bigger. That way you get more of that color in the front versus like maybe one tiny strip of it if that makes sense. A lot of people enjoy making blankets. So I've seen a ton of like crochet granny stripe blankets or people have been doing um, a really popular one called the habitation throw where you start at one end and you knit, like grow I think, and then you shrink it down to the other end. Um, people have been doing a mitered square blanket which is a lot of little squares. Also knit kind of the same way I think from one corner to the other corner and then you I don't know, stitch them all together. Um, I am not a blanket making person. I inserted, I inserted a little footage in the beginning of this episode. Um, I was cleaning out some stuff and found all these crochet granny squares. I think there were like over 50 of them, but I started them probably over 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago. Um, and I just don't do well with a lot of little pieces that have to come together afterwards. So they were all in this big brown bag and yeah, we'll see. Um, my youngest daughter was like, can I have this? And um, I said, maybe not yet. Mommy might put it together, we'll see. And then there was like a bigger one of bigger granny squares that I had plans for this throw except I guess I stopped at five of these like big squares. So what are you gonna do with five? It doesn't really work as five. So maybe I'll just put the four together, leave it at that, although it's a little awkward being just like a square. I guess it can be like a lap blanket. And then the other one, maybe one of the kids can have for their stuffed animals or something. I don't know. Or if I made a solid one to go on the back, I could end up seeming the sides together as a pillow cover. That would, go, that would look pretty nice. Anyway, we'll see. So I don't do blankets. That's just end of story. Don't do blankets. But a lot of people really enjoy them. They use them for long-term projects. And then another way to use up um, little bits of yarn or mini skeins are to make stuffed animals. And you can crochet those or knit them. And there are tons of patterns out there and they are super fun. I've crocheted a bunch of them. I've knit a few. Um, it definitely takes a lot longer knitting uh, like stuffed animals than it does crocheting them. I have done both and they are super fun and are great ways to play with um, yarn and um, play with color. And then for stuffing it, if you have like really little bits of yarn that you really can't do anything with, stuff your stuffies with them. So like here I have a bunch of little ends that I've cut off from projects and what are you gonna do with them? So you can put them into stuffed animals. There you go, nothing wasted. Um, 
But yeah, I think uh, that is it for those. And then now I would love to share with you um, some ideas I have coming up and just to kind of share with you how I'm gonna group some yarns together from my advent calendar from 2020. All right, so I shared a little bit of the um, yarns in the intro of this video so you could kind of see the spread of them. Um, there was one 10 gram mini skein to open for each day leading up, up to Christmas and there was like a full skein at the end. So the way that this advent calendar, it's the Sweet Sparrow Yarns um, by Julie and she does it in multiple bases. They're all fingering weight, but they are different bases. And you don't know how much of each base you're going to receive. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there were seven bases in this one. And the way I've organized them is I have separated them by base so that I can figure out, you know, how much of what I have. So I will share that with you so you kind of have an idea. So these three here are on her J base, which is uh, two ply, 100% super wash merino. So I know that these, since they don't have nylon in them and they're super wash merino, not non super wash, that I probably won't be using these ones for socks, unless it's for like the cuff that doesn't get a lot of friction on it. Um, but these could be really lovely for color work in a hat or for mittens. Now these four are on her nest base, which is a two ply, 100% non super wash Peruvian Highland wool. And I just love these colors. They are so beautiful. So with these, um, since there's four of them, so that's 40 grams, I was thinking these would make really nice uh, fingerless mitts. I could stripe them and they would be so warm and the colors go really nicely together. So that's my plan for these ones. Okay, next, these four are on her house wren base, which is a two ply and they're 85 15 superwash merino nylon tweed. And these ones I thought could be really pretty together as a striped sock. I mean, look how pretty these colors are together. I just love it. Now, because it's 40 grams and I find most of my socks I make are between 50 and like 75, 75 being like a really full length sock um, and then 50 being much shorter. So I'm going to pair it with these two, and these two are mm -mm -mm -mm, on her owl base. They are three ply, 70, 20, 10, super wash merino yak nylon. And these colors go really well with the tweed. So I think that'll be really beautiful. And now, like I mentioned earlier, I find my gauge to be about two grams for 10 rounds on fingering weight. So what that means is this is a 10 gram, right? So split between two socks is five grams each. So five grams each, I can do two cuffs, right? And then if I'm worried about a heel, I've got another one that I can do two heels. And then depending on how I'm faring by the time I get to the bottom, they could be striped into for a toe after I've done my striping in these. So lots of ways to play with that. Another option would be to do toe up, you know, cast on with one of these two yak bases for the toes, do my striping in the tweed, do one of the yak bases for the heel, go back to the tweed for the leg, and then see where I'm at as far as the cuff goes. So same kind of train of thought either way I want to go. So there's that. These two are the Puffin. They are 9010 Superwash Merino Nylon Slub. Now I've never knit or crocheted with slub before. It has, it has really fun texture. These I don't have like an exact plan for, but I'm thinking these ones would be really fun for stuffies. Like if you made um, 
like a little animal and you were gonna have a, like a little vest or sweater or something to it, like an accessory for a stuffed animal, this would be really fun. Um, so I'm saving these ones for that. Okay, and then the next one I have to show you is, okay, these are on her glittery ones. They're called a uh, magpie. It's two ply, 7525 superwash merino nylon gold Stellina. And these colors are absolutely beautiful. So there's five of these. Now, the way I am grouping these is there are four of her nut hatch base, which is a four ply, 75, 25 superwash merino nylon. Beautiful, right? So because they are similar in their like merino content, both 75% superwash merino, I'm gonna combine these two bases together um, and organize them by color. So warm versus cooler colors. And then those ones I think will also make really fun socks. So this is how I'm combining them. So I've got my warm colors here of the sparkly and not sparkly. This one is slightly more variegated, so I was thinking that could be a fun um, contrast for like the cuff, heels and toes. We'll see how far that 10 gram can go for that. Um, and then I could end up using this gold Stellina one for the toes or cuff or whatever. And then the cooler colors are these four. There's two sparkly, two not. Also will be super fun for socks. So I think that is all I wanted to share with you on my ideas for scrappy, not scrappy projects. Um, I would love to hear some of your favorite patterns. Um, do share below. Um, I'm not sure if you share a link if it'll work because I'm pretty sure to like avoid um, like spammy comments. I have the box checked for no comments with links. So if you are going to share what you are working on or some of your favorite scrappy not scrappy mini skein projects, maybe just write out the title of the project and the designer or something like that. So if someone else is interested, they can look for it as well. Um, I hope this was an inspiring episode and that you have some ideas on how to pair your colors or yarns together. Um, and yeah, so cheers to being creative. I hope you're doing well. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.